Welcome to Artscape. I'm your host, Bill Harrison. Uh, hopefully you will enjoy our new set here today. We have a brand new set, and I'm here with local photographer, one of the most talented photographers in Fredericksburg, Stephen Graham. Stephen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Bill. And uh, we have some wonderful photographs here. And uh, before we get to them, we want to talk a little bit about you and, and how you became a photographer. So now you didn't grow up in uh, Fredericksburg. No, I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I was born there and raised. I moved away when I was 17, uh, joined the Navy, uh, spent six years traveling around and settled here in Fredericksburg. Okay. Now, is, is the Navy where you learned photography? It's not. I never uh, set out to study photography. It was kind of a, uh, a side project that kind of supported the graphic design work that I do. And I started shooting photography and enjoyed it and wanted to actually do something for myself. So you did some commercial photography before you started doing your own? Yes, yeah, only to support like uh, the work I did for graphic design. Okay. All right. Now, you, 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 um, you dabble in some other arts, too, right? Uh, you do some acrylics. I do some acrylic painting, some mixed media. Um, I started taking art classes very young uh, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents put me in a lot of community recreation center type art classes. That's important. So your parents are very supportive. Very supportive. Yeah. Um, I think it's something we always find with artists is they have to have some sort of support system behind them. Right. And I went to a great uh, private school where they had a really good art program, too. And part of being in a small school is you have the same art teacher for your entire oh, wow. uh, school career. So from kindergarten through 12th grade, I had the same art teacher. And I think the establishing a relationship with, with an art teacher uh, in that, that long of a time period really encourages you to be good at art. Yeah, yeah. So now you, you try all these different mediums. Um, why, what's, what about photography that really you know, attracts you? I'm not sure what it is. Um, I think it's just because you can capture an image and make it what you want it to be, what you picture in your mind. So it's not necessarily uh, what you see that you're taking away. It's what you want to see that you right. take away from it. So you capture an image and, and, and I'll transform it into what, what I want the scene to look like. Yeah, now we're going to talk about that in the, in the second segment, but you, you do a lot of altering. You take the photograph, but then you also do quite a bit of altering yes. to them. Um, one of the things that's a lot different I think now than, than maybe years ago is, is the photography is not the same as it used to be. I mean, you do all digital photography, right? I do all digital photography. I've never actually done film photography, um, despite having sort of been raised in a camera. My dad uh, co-owned a blueprint company in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I spent a lot of my days at his office in the summers and spring break and uh, when I was not in school, and there was a large camera there. It was, it was actually two rooms, and the shutter was in the wall between the two rooms. Wow. And it was my favorite part of the office because it was dark and, and red and right. a fun place to hang out. So you had, an old, you had a dark room in there too? Right. Well, the dark room was inside the camera. It was actually a two-room camera. Oh, wow. So the, the camera was... What would they take pictures with that for? Well, they use it to enlarge blueprints. Oh. It was a blueprint company wow. before digital presses. Right, as you say, they probably don't use that anymore, do they? No, they don't use that anymore, and they're actually not in business anymore because of digital presses. Right. Um, now, you, um, you have a full-time job, family. How, how, how many hours a week do you d dedicate yourself to photography? Not many. Uh, maybe three or four hours a week. I, I like to shoot on the weekends, mm -hmm. on hikes, um, mostly just in uh, my free time. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of free time. I do have a full-time job and right. a, a graphic design firm. And three kids. And three kids. Right. So, so, you, so you guys do a lot of hiking and camping? We do a lot of hiking, mostly in the Fredericksburg area, which is where I like to shoot. All of my, my photography and shows have been of, of shots from the Fredericksburg area. Right. That's kind of neat that you can you know, do something with your family, like you know, go out with your family hiking and sort of you know, take the, the camera along with you. Yeah. You know, make that a part of your, your experience. Right. And my kids especially like seeing the process happen. They've, they've been with, with me when I've taken some of these photos. Then they've actually seen them hanging in different locations, and I think they really appreciate seeing oh, yeah. you know, something that they, they were part of. I guess it's too early to say whether, um, whether they, they themselves will be taking any pictures in the near future. Well, they have cameras, but I'm not sure if they're really interested in photography. Yeah, I think it's great, though. You kind of grow up with that, though. Kind of grow right. up you know, seeing you do it, and I think, I think no matter what, they'll get a, a you know, great appreciation for it. That's what did it for me. It was, it was being raised in that environment and, and um, you know, inside of a camera, so to speak, seeing film developed and the process and hanging out in dark rooms. I think it, it sort of gave me a, an interest in photography, even though I only shoot digitally. Right. No, so never film, huh? That's interesting. Never. Never. Yeah. That, uh, um, so you said you, you kind of go out camping or, or hiking, and then that's where you take all your pictures. Are you sort of 
inspired by the things or is it mainly just you know the na nature I like nature but I like nature that doesn't look completely natural um, yeah. Rocks yeah, well, that's, do that inter that's what's interesting about your photographs too if you look at them they, they look like they could be on Mars I mean they look like they could be almost anywhere it's kind mm -hmm. of amazing and, and we'll get in, in, get into them in the next segment but they they don't look like they're from around here they are. They're yeah. from around here. Yeah, I mean that, that's just incredible that yeah. you, could, you, know, you could take something. You're not altering. You're not going up and moving things around. That's just the way they are. And right. I, the only thing I've ever moved was was one piece of ice from one of my series, and I had a conversation with someone that was at the show that I actually felt a little bit bad about manipulating the scene, but it's ice and it's it's going to melt and. It wasn't right. actually disturbing nature because so it you was fessed up to the fact that you altered it. I did. I staged one. Yeah, I staged one. <laughs> I think it's okay. I think I think probably mo most photographers do that quite a bit. So, um, besides nature, rocks, anything? Do you, do you do any shots of people or? I don't shoot people yeah. unless it's uh, to support a graphic design job that I'm doing. Right. Um, I just prefer to shoot nature and scenes and architecture and. Now, before you go out on a shoot, do you, are you thinking, I really want to get some, I want to get some rocks and water, or are you just kind of open to whatever pops up? Well, if I'm on a hike, I know that I'm going to be shooting nature. Mm -hmm. um, depending on where I'm going, I know that I'm going to be shooting the water or rocks, or if it's going to be woods. Um, and that, that determines what type of lenses I'll carry and uh, what kind of equipment I'll carry. If I'm going to carry a tripod at all, if I'm going to shoot water, I'm going to carry a tripod. Right. Um, I've been pretty impressed with a lot of photographers I know they don't really have super expensive equipment. I mean, would you consider the equipment you have expensive? I don't think it's a expensive equipment. It's not even professional equipment. It's it's sort of high end prosumer, uh, pro consumer equipment. Right. Um, but it's not it's not very expensive. I think that's interesting because you don't. I don't think. I think years ago, you you know, you needed you know high end equipment. I guess it's just not like that anymore. Yeah. Now you don't. Um, you do need some software, and and you need to know the capabilities of the software and be able to to mm -hmm. use it to, you know, its fullest. But really open to anybody. Almost anybody can go out and, and... Now, you didn't have any sort of formal training as a photographer. You just sort of... I didn't. I took some advanced digital photography courses at the Corcoran, um, but I don't think I really learned a whole lot about photography. It was mostly Photoshop that I learned there and already knew Photoshop because I have a graphic design background, so it was... Right. Yeah, you sort of learned, it, you know, in the trade just kind of by doing it right, right. which is interesting you know that's kind of how i learned to become a painter too hey listen we're going to stick around um we got one break coming up here uh, when we come back we're going to talk to steven about some of his photography we'll be right back with artscape